Welcome back. You're tuned into the My Cool Inventions Network. Why, Andrew's sitting here by my side. ACOS, the solution is your host. This is the program where we feature innovation, entrepreneurism, invention, and we give away some selling secrets, too, along the way. Yeah. If you were listening earlier, I was talking about the double-double, right? Yeah. That's a little added, added, added little CTA closing technique that I have. And right now, I want to talk to you about quality assurance... Okay, and if you if you have a formula like uh, soap or laundry soap or chemicals and stuff like that, uh, what does it take to get through all that? Because it's a changing wild west world out there with that. So I want to talk about what kind of issues it might have with that. So quality assurance, Andrew. Okay. This is the thing that all the retailers, a lot of our inventors and entrepreneurs say, I want to sell to Walmart. And I want to sell to Walgreens, and, and you know these guys all have big QA quality yeah. assurance departments. And of Absolutely. course, what they'd make you do is they make you make sure it's regulatory, make sure it's a, you know. It's legal to sell. Make sure there's a lot of rules and regulations you got to sort of live up to. We deal with it every day on shopping channels, right? Now, we are kind of chemical experts because we sell things like laundry soap and we sell things like uh, uh, laundry sheets. Come on over here. Let me get my coffee over here. Thanks. Thanks, Tony. Funny. <laughs> uh, sorry, he was, he was sitting by the side. I didn't want to. Wait. So we have a lot of experience when it comes to the issues when it comes to quality assurance. Now, right. if every time you sell a food product or a chemical product or a skincare line, anything that comes in contact with the human flesh right. in one way or another, usually the first thing that you have to do is you have to make an MSDS sheet, a material data safety sheet, MS, materials safety data sheet, material safety data sheet, an MSDS sheet. Now, to really complicate things, uh, it's a 12-point sheet, okay? It's a, it's a real standardized, you can Google it, what's an MS, material safety data sheet. They'll explain to you what you have to list. It's things like the flammability, how it hurts people, who do you call if it gets in your eyes, stuff right. like that. Right. The basic, you have, to, you have to reveal, some people will get all weird about this, you have to reveal any dangerous chemicals that are on a, on a, a safety data sheet that you have to sort of expose. A lot of people who have secret formulas don't want to do that, but good luck with that. You've got to reveal yeah, anything that no. might harm a human being along the way. Yeah. Now, I know in the piano business, what do we have? We had those polishes and, right. and we had the stains, you know, you can stain <laughs> sticks that you could repair furniture with and stuff like right, that. Right. Those would all have MSDS sheets that anytime I felt like asking the company for the MSDS sheet, there's a legal obligation for them to give it to me because I might be allergic or I might be all that sort of stuff. So, so the MSDS sheet, guys, I don't care what you're doing. We've had many inventors here who've had sort of a products that rely on chemicals. I don't know. I know all the makeup guys out there that come to us. That's all chemicals. Right. You have to provide a material safety data sheet. Now, in America, it's in, a, in United Canada, it's a 12 point North American style. Okay. And now there's a European one that's changing. I want. That's why I want to talk about in the European Union. There's a 16 point MSDS sheet. They're a little more comprehensive in Europe, and it's changing all the time. You have to register now your chemicals for uh, things like uh, biodegradability, uh, the trash, and there, there's, there's a whole um, uh, a system over there that you have to register with, right? Okay. It's called the REACH program, and you have to register all these things. They want to know how much are you, uh, it's kind of good actually, they want to know if you're importing the stuff into say England or Germany or Italy or something, how much are you adding to the landfills? So you now have oh, to report okay. the plastic, you have to report what's the chemical going in the landfill. So this REACH program in, in the Europe, you have to register for it. How that works, people are always ask me it's pretty simple google uh, a reach agent okay <laughs> they're out there usually chemical guys usually phds and stuff in chemistry and they will help you write your msds sheet and they'll help you register all that costs a little bit of money help you register with the government so, so, with the european union uh what you're importing over there so that's kind of a complication okay. uh, and it's not so easy people come here all the time we have a guy who's going to show up today he's on the inventor showdown he's got this bee sting guy oh yeah yeah bee sting yeah. guy stop the sting oh, yeah. Stop the sting. Stop the sting. Or as we like to call it, stings are out. Stings are out. <laughs> we have a product called Stades are out. This guy stops the sting, so we like to call it stings, stings are out. <laughs> so um, so that, that guy came to us, and of course he's going to be on uh, on Evine, on the Inventor Showdown. Well, he had to produce a 16, uh, sorry, 12-point MSDS sheet. That's what right. we has to do. And we have to, nothing was on there that was dangerous, so we didn't have to register much, much, but we had to comply. Let me talk about North America compliance, all right? California 
is way ahead of any other state in this union, way ahead of any other state. They have so much more strict chemical requirements wow. than any other state. They have their own state set of rules, all right? Um, especially when it comes to uh, volatile organic compounds, all right? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you what that, volatile VOCs as we like to call them, volatile organic compounds. For example, our stains are out, is a banana oil, oil from the skin of a banana. Just like the oil, you could squish the skin somehow and extract oil from the <laughs> banana skins. What makes the banana slippery when you step on it, right? You've seen all the cartoons. Well, that banana oil is a principal ingredient of our stains are out, right? That's yep. pretty common. It's also, by the way, a food flavoring. They use it in bubble gum and candy and stuff like that. You okay. might recognize the smell if you've ever had a bottle of stains are out in your hand. So what happens, right, in, 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 in California, they deem Banana oil to be a vol volatile organic compound. Uh, yeah, but it comes from bananas. Yeah, we don't care. Wow. It's volatile. And it's organic, and it's a compound. It's a VOC. So what happened is I was not allowed to ship my, all of a sudden, out of the blue, I couldn't ship to California anymore because wow. the concentration of my banana oil was too high. Here's a little stretch for you. So I had to start lowering those concentrations. Wow. Right? And a matter of fact, to make my stain remover in California less effective. But, you know, they had their rules. So the rules. these are kind of the tricks and things that you fall into when it comes to uh, uh, com comes to chemicals. Here's, here's one I'll, 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 everybody can relate to. Have you ever noticed that your dishwashing soap today kind of sucks? <laughs> really? Doesn't clean anymore. Did you notice that? No. Yep. What does Celeste do? She's always, I go, sweeter, what are you doing? She's got a big thing of vinegar. And she's every, gotta, every second dishwashing, she's she's taking the vinegar bottle and she's throwing it into the dishwasher like this. Got to get some vinegar in there. I go, what are you doing? He goes, well, because uh, all the hard water spots, we had water spots in our stuff there yep. anymore. Yep. You know, and then she goes, it doesn't clean anymore. And she's right. It doesn't clean anymore. Because a couple of years ago, they banned phosphates and nitrates from our dishwashing <laughs> soap, all right? Oh, wow, okay. And no one noticed because, you know, the dishwashing soap companies were coming up standing on their soap boxes going, like, hey. uh, our principal ingredients of our dishwashing soap is no longer allowed. By the way, it was a good thing they banned it because phosphates and nitrates are destroying the environment. Right. However, it kept our dishes clean, really clean. <laughs> and so what the dishwashing soap companies did, which I really kind of surprised with, is they started coming up with this, uh, all of a sudden one changed their name from one to another, right? What was that one that was called? I can't remember. Uh, now it's called Vanish. The whole name changed right oh, away. Wow, okay. They rebranded themselves. Uh -huh. And now they started doing tricks like, oh, look, two different soaps. One's white, one's a little blue, and these little tablets. They started distracting us with different marketing ideas and packaging ideas. But the truth was, and it's not their fault, the truth was that the, the, the principal ingredients had changed. And your soap doesn't clean anymore. Wow. Bottom line, okay? Wow. And why that happened is because the chemicals and formulas, all these restricted, they're being changed. And again, for good reason. I mean, I mean, we probably don't need to kill the environment because we want clean dishes. I don't know. We can wash our own dishes, right? Well, maybe wash your own dishes in the <laughs> sink, maybe. You don't need to have all that. Kind. And by the way, the phosphates and nitrates, what they were doing in the dishwashing soap, because I'm a chemist, it helped sheet the water off. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Actually, you know, you don't need a lot of dangerous chemicals to wash dishes. You need a little sodium lauryl sulfate, a little soap, and, you know, and that's why people do it in the sink with a little, you know, squeezy yeah. soap. You don't need, that's basically pretty, you need, you know, basically it's, you can get the plant derivative type soaps that aren't very toxic to the environment. That's why these companies like Method and these guys have all come out. Even our soap is not toxic. So what happens is, uh, you know, they have, uh, um, oh, thank you, I was Finnish. Don't, Tony, just the Finnish brand became Vanish ah, or something. Yeah, okay. I can't remember. They changed brands. So you don't need a lot of toxic chemicals in a you know, clean dishes. The trouble is in a dishwasher, right, when it's extreme heat and extreme stuff, you got some issues because the water evaporates really quickly. So right. what happens is the water spots uh, stay up because they want to heat that thing, get it dry fast. So what happens is your dishes have water spots on them that they didn't have before. An alternative to that, if you want cleaner dishes, cancel the drying function okay. and let them air dry. And the trouble with that in our house, you couldn't do that because between washing cycles, uh, we would have a lot of dirty dishes because if we allowed the air to air dry, we would have two or three loads in the sink before the thing dried. So that's a little, little, little uh, sort of chemistry lesson for your dishwashing soap. The other area that is really chemically dangerous in your house is your uh, your washing machine soap. It's for your for your laundry. Yeah. There's been a lot of sort of controversy about that. These pods and stuff kids are eating. What was that trend? 
Tony, that was your generation. What? Why was your generation swallowing the dishwashing, so, uh, washing machine soap? Why, why were you guys doing that? Don't put that on me. Well, well, it's your age. I don't know. Uh, uh, they were younger than me. I can tell you, oh. Al's not Al's not digesting dishwash uh, washing machines so many times soon. What do you mean he's swallowing river water and rocks? Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what he's. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah, he's just swallowing river water and rocks. He's not. What was that? Well, the kids were all 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 the ones, Tide Pod Challenge. The Tide Pod Challenge. Why doesn't there like an arsenic challenge? Like, what's wrong with these kids? I was surprised you didn't try to get in on it with your uh, washing machine. Pod. All I know is uh, I really believe in. Uh, I guess that's what they call natural selection in Darwin's evolution. The weak just kill themselves off. That's wow. what they do. So, so yeah, there was that's kind of controversy strange. about that. So, because the washing the washing machine or your 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 clothing soap has a lot of nasty stuff in it too, um, you know. So, and it does is a pollutant. So, I always tell people try to avoid certain things. And if you're an inventor and entrepreneur selling these things, you kind of have to stay on top of it. My goodness yeah. gracious, it's a chain. It always changes on you. This is the business that we're in. And how do you keep on top of it, uh, well, there's uh, you can just Google it, right? You can just Google this sort of thing. Uh, you can Google the uh, material safety data uh, sheet people and, and um, just keep on top of the regulations because these chemicals do change for the good. You know, I, I know it would be easier to sell more dishwashing soap if the water sheeted off, but, yeah, but you know, if the animals are dying and the trees are dying and our planet's dying, we might want to just you know slow down and not dry our dishes a little longer. That's a little uh, selling secrets into chemicals and formulas. They really challenge us today. Wow. I got all chemical and formula e there wow. on there on there. So this is the My Cool Inventions Network, and if you want to be on this program, go to mycoolinventions.com. Hit the submit button. Who knows? Maybe you have the next hundred million dollar idea.